Pulmonology Bursts, Part 3. A venous blood gas with a pH of 7.3 and a PCO2 of 60 corresponds to what values on an arterial blood gas? Converting BBGs to ABGs. Let's start with the pH. So 7.3 pH equals what on ABG? 7.34. So a pH of 7.3 on the BBG is 7.34 on ABG. And what about a PCO2 of 60 on VBG? What will that be on ABG? So a PCO2 of 60 on VBG will equal 54 on the ABG. So it's pretty simple. When converting from a VBG to an ABG, you add 0.04 to the pH and subtract 6 from the PCO2. And that makes sense, right? So the blood is more acidotic the farther away you are from the heart. So venous blood gases are always more acidotic than arterial blood gases because they're further away from the heart. So there's been more time for acidosis to occur. So a lower pH by the time it gets to the venous system. So once again, add 0.04 to the pH when going from a VBG to an ABG. Subtract 6 from the PCO2 when you go from a VBG to an ABG. All right, next. Name the two most common causes of chylothorax. Two most common causes of chylothorax. Number one, malignancy. And number two, trauma. So chyle, chylothorax, chyle. Chyle is a milky fluid that consists of lymph and emulsified fat. And eventually, it gets passed to the bloodstream through the thoracic duct. But now in malignancy or trauma, the process can get obstructed and chyle can leak out into the pleural space. So the key to diagnosing a chyle thorax is going to be in the pleural fluid analysis. So a pleural fluid triglyceride concentration greater than what value is indicative of a chyle thorax? Pleural fluid TG concentration. Yes, greater than 110 milligrams per deciliter. And a pleural fluid triglyceride concentration less than this other value almost always excludes a chylothorax. So pleural fluid level, triglyceride level of what? Concentration of 50 milligrams per deciliter. So if it's above 110, you're thinking chylothorax. And if pleural fluid triglycerides are less than 50, you're not thinking chylothorax. You're thinking of a different process. Now on a board exam, it's gonna be a patient with either a malignancy or a trauma their pleural fluid will be milky, the triglyceride concentration will be over 110, and that's going to be a chylothorax almost every time. And it really doesn't get any more straightforward than that. Next, mechanism of action of Bosentan, brand name Traclear. Bosentan, B-O-S-E-N-T-A-N, brand name Traclear. Yes, this is an endothelin receptor antagonist. And what condition is Bosentin used to treat? Use Bosentin to treat pulmonary artery hypertension. Next, pulmonary hypertension will often have an increased P2 heart sound upon auscultation along with this type of splitting. So pulmonary hypertension, you're going to have an increased second heart sound, an increased P2 pulmonic valve, but you're also going to have this type of splitting, a narrow fixed splitting. So pulmonary hypertension has a narrow fixed splitting. And what other condition causes a fixed splitting? ASD, right. Atrial septal defects will cause a fixed splitting. However, ASD is not narrow. So in pulmonary hypertension, you get narrow fixed splitting. In atrial septal defects, you get fixed splitting but it's not narrow. How many days should you treat a healthcare acquired pneumonia with antibiotics for? How many days should you treat a healthcare acquired pneumonia? Eight days. That seems to be the consensus. Eight days for healthcare associated pneumonia. Lung volume reduction surgery is most effective in this group of COPD patients. Lung volume reduction surgery in COPD 
it tends to be more effective in patients having number one, a non-homogeneous upper lobe disease, number two, patients who have failed pulmonary rehab, number three, an FEV1 between 20% and 35% of predicted, number four, a DLCO above 20% of predicted, number five, hyperinflation, and number six, no other major medical comorbidities. So lung volume reduction surgery in COPD, it tends to be most effective. Once again, number one, a non-homogeneous upper lobe disease. Number two, patients who have already failed pulmonary rehab. Number three, an FEV1 between 20% and 35% of predicted. Number four, a DLCO above 20% of predicted. And number five, hyperinflation. And number six, no other major medical comorbidities. And those are the patients that do best with lung volume reduction surgery.